21 through 23 which reads not everyone who says to me this is NIV Lord Lord not everyone who says to me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven but only the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven many will say to me on that day Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come now with bowed heads and with humble hearts. Uh, in in submission to your will, uh, thanking you for this day and allowing us to see it. Um, we ask that you grant us all the grace that we may not only be hearers of your word, but doers also. Give us the grace of your Holy Spirit today, Father. Please allow me to decrease as you increase. As I speak, Lord, allow your people to hear only you. And as I stand before them, Father, allow them to see you and not me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus said, Then, I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. This seems uh, strange to hear our all-knowing Lord say there's something or someone he doesn't know. Uh, but in this instance, but in this this instance, uh, Jesus isn't referring to a life he doesn't know um, is, is there or a person he doesn't know is, is living um, or a heart he hasn't searched. No, what, what Jesus is referring to is a relational knowledge um, it's about relationship but um, but I'm, I'm really getting ahead of myself right now but as we uh, encounter our text today uh, let us consider the thought not something you want to hear not something you want to hear So if you look back a few verses to verse 15, Jesus is ending his uh, Sermon on the Mount with a final warning about true faith. Jesus says, beware of false, beware of false prophets um, who show up as wolves in sheep's clothing. You know, they act like church, they look like church, they use church lingo, but they will not belong to the Lord. They will have flavorless, rotten fruit. They sow seeds of discord. Uh, they disrupt previously achieved unity. And they destroy spiritual foundations. 
Our text today, look at our text, verse 21. Uh, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. You know, that's the first part of verse 1. It matters not what you say. It doesn't matter what you say. How much you profess with your with your words, saying that you uh, follow Jesus can't save you. Saying that you follow Jesus doesn't save you. Identifying with a church can't save you. Um, no lip service will be good enough. Uh, it's not acceptable. Your gift of gab, your power of persuasion won't help you. Not on, not on that day. It is a personal thing, though. Um, look, at, look at the second part of verse 21. But, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven the one not the ones right it ain't plural it's not a collective thing not a group thing no you um no groupons of work you know to gain access into heaven right they're not going to be accepting groupons you can't be grandfathered in uh my mama and her mama and her mama's mama were all christians so we are a Christian family and I got to be good? Nah. Nah, it's, a, it's personal. That's why he said the one. Because you can't be with someone doing God's will and say that you are also because you were with them. Blessed by association has its limits. Right? You're, you're, you're not going to gain entry um, into heaven because you are um, a, a major Christian, you know, a, a Christian bigwig, a, a high roller, a high spiritual roller. You're their, you're their, your their friend, their buddy, because you're 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 with them all the time. You're not. That's not going to get you in heaven. It's relational. You and Jesus, me and Jesus, not us. And Jesus. Jesus looks into each individual heart and searches it. And when he does, um, I never knew you is not something you want to hear. Right? Look at look at verse twenty two. I'm not gonna be not gonna be long, but Verse 22 says, many will say to me on that day, and that day is talking about judgment day, that the day that we will stand before Christ. Amen. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? can see here they are pleading their case they they know what's at stake here you know they're about to get sent into the darkness but jesus i mean but just because uh just because you can utter the words and perform the task doesn't mean jesus knows you It doesn't mean that you are, he is in your heart. A person can seem like a Christian in the eyes of other people, right? Yet still be an evildoer in God's sight and sent away from his presence. You can fool some of the people some of the time You can't fool all of the people all of the time, right? But you can't fool God any other time. You can't fool Christ any other time. 
So in verse 23, um, your evil doer will be sent away. Right? Only those who do the Father's will and who are known of God will enter heaven. So, what is the Father's will? Since you, since you guys have your Bibles, turn to Romans 12, 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, and this is a well-known passage of Scripture. It says, and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is, I did a, um, <laughs> in studying, in researching for this sermon, I, I kind of went down a rabbit hole when it came to, uh, when it came to God's will. I, uh, there is all of this permissive will and um, acceptable will and all of these wills of God, but this is the only place I've found that directly says and expounds upon the will of God in the Bible. And, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the only spot. This is the only place. It says that God's will is good, acceptable, and perfect. It says how to do God's will. It tells us right there. It says, do not be conformed to this world. Well, how do I do that? It tells you that too. It says, renew your mind and be transformed. That's God's will. His will for us is for us to not be conformed to this world. It's simple. And he tells us how to get it done. So many people say, well, I don't know God's will for my life. Romans 12, 2. Well, I don't know God's will for me in this particular situation. Yes, you do. Romans 12, 2. But how do I know God's will for my children? Romans 12, 2. Amen. That's it. There are a lot of places um, in the Bible that um, tell us things that could be God's will. And Romans 12, 2 is a, a nutshell, right? So there are places when you're, um, someone is speaking to you about God's will and they, they take you to um, another passage of scripture. And it says, for instance, um, some men came to Jesus once with, uh, with a question about, uh, what God required for them, uh, what God required of them. And they asked Jesus, what must we do to do works, to do the works God requires? And Jesus answered them and said, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. John, that's John 6, 28 and 29. But that doesn't dispute what Romans 12, 2 says, right? Believe in the one he has sent. That's the beginning of, that's the very beginning of trans, being transformed. That's the very beginning of renewing your mind. When we accept Christ, that's the beginning of it, right? That's the beginning of us accepting God's will for our life. God wants us to have faith in his son. He commanded us to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, 
1 John 3, 23. Those who are born again by faith in Christ will produce good works to the glory of God. Amen. But when Jesus said, I never knew you to the to the uh, fake disciples to the or should I say almost disciples? Nah, I'm going to say fake because that's what they were. They were fake, fake Christians. Right. But when he said, I never knew you to them, he meant uh, that he never recognized them as his true disciples or his friends. He never had any anything in common with them or he, he never approved them. They didn't have a relationship. Right. They were. Um, they were no relations of his. Christ did not dwell in their hearts, nor did they have his mind. Remember 12, Romans 12, 2? They didn't have his mind. We got to renew our mind. The Bible says, um, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus right so in all these ways and, and and more jesus never knew them and the, the thing to understand here is jesus is not ending a relationship he's not breaking up a relationship because there was never one to begin with right and so we have to be careful when we um come when we come to the lord when we come to church and we just come to church or we've been in church so long and you know we don't remember oh did i really give my life if you're unsure go ahead and do it right despite um the uh despite the well-crafted prayers of of um, these fake Christians and the, um, the showy displays of uh, religious fervor or the, the zeal or the, the energy that they put behind what they do. They had no intimacy with Christ. They, 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 they had no relationship. And because of that, Christ said, I never knew you. And that's not something you want to hear. So it turns out that what, what matters isn't r really that we know God on some level, but that God knows us. That's, that's what matters. That's that's the thing. The Bible tells us that whoever loves God is known by God. It tells us that the Lord tends his flock like a shepherd. And that his sheep knows his voice. But more importantly, it tells the Bible tells us that he knows who his sheep are. That's the most important thing. So when we hear those words, I never knew you, um, depart from me, you evildoers, you workers of iniquity. You know, that really shows that Jesus is uh, truly omniscient, right? He didn't know them in the sense that he would if they were his followers, but he knew their hearts. And he knew that their hearts were full 
of iniquity. Jesus, we know that Jesus looks at the heart. We know that he searches the heart. But did you know that what he's looking for is himself? He's looking for himself in your heart. That's what he's looking for. Because if, uh, if, if he's not there, then you're not his. The Bible says these people come near. They come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Jesus knows your heart, and he knows if what you are saying, if what you are doing is from the heart. He knows. These evildoers um, who Jesus does not know are, are fake Christians. They're um, false prophets and teachers. And um, they are churchgoers, church folk, right? They, they go to church. They were at church, but not in church. And church wasn't in them. They weren't in Christ because Christ wasn't in their heart. These who um, are told to depart from the presence of the Lord will not partake. They won't be a part of the blessings of the kingdom. They will be cast into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Those fake Christians whom Jesus says he never knew will not produce the fruit of the Spirit, right? They're um, fleshy. And that's all that they can produce, works of the flesh. And Jesus warns that one day he will tell a group of people who, who practice religion, right? I never knew you. God takes no delight in uh, sending people to hell, right? But those who are told to depart, have turned down God's eternal purpose and plan for their lives. They have uh, rejected the light of the gospel, choosing the darkness instead because um, their deeds were evil. At the judgment, they try to justify themselves as worthy of heaven on the basis of of their works, you know, prof they pr produce prophecies, uh, exorcisms, miracles, whatever. There was, um, I saw an African uh, preacher who claimed he's 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 um, he's uh, uh, being hit with lawsuits now, but. He tried to say he faked bringing somebody from the dead, bringing somebody back from the dead. And, you know, there was a lot of people and, you know, big um, hoopla and to do about it. But, you know, for what? What, what purpose? It's not going to get uh, you into heaven. It's not going to get even get you into God's good graces. But these 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 people who are going to be um, 
pleading their case and trying to justify um, the fact that they should be uh, led into the kingdom, um, you know, while claiming to do all these good works in Christ's name, they failed to do the only work of God that counts, which is to have faith in the one he sent, Jesus Christ. Right? Only those things that we do for Christ will last. And so Jesus, the righteous judge, condemns them to eternal separation from him. That's the second death. Have faith in Jesus. Have faith in the one God, the Father, has given to you. The one who came from heaven, the one who walked among us, the one who died on Calvary's cross for you, for you and for me. Have faith in him. Let me let me tell you this and I'm and I'm done. Uh, when Jesus is searching your heart, like I said, he's looking for himself. If he's not in your heart, then there's only evil. Make sure he finds himself in your heart. Place Jesus on the throne of your heart. Make him Lord and master of your heart. Be sincere, be true, be who God called you to be. Thank you. God bless you. We would love to hear from you. So please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe. You can email us at the word of God CM at gmail.com. And if you would like to support this ministry financially, you can go to our website, TWOGCM.com, and click on the word tithe. There you'll be able to give and or donate and support. We thank you always. We praise God for you. And we pray for you. We pray that God will continue to bless and keep you.